It's a pleasure to be here, uh, make some music before uh, His Holiness comes on. The next piece I'll play is Meditation uh, from the Thais by uh, Jules Massenet.
<laughs> so I've been told that I'm supposed to uh, stall. <laughs> Yet another piece of music. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank you very much for the, the, the beautiful piece we just had. Um, my name is Scott Kennedy. I am, will be here to help the day run smoothly, I hope. Um, I'll give a sort of brief introduction to myself. I'm a steering committee member for the Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values. Uh, I am also the Dean of Research at the Mazdar Institute of Science and Technology. This is a new university based in uh, Abu Dhabi in the UAE, where we're focused on advancing the, the knowledge and practice of sustainability. So today's session is very near and dear to my heart. To give you a uh, plan for the day, what we'll be doing is we'll have two sessions during the day. We'll have a panel one in the morning where we'll uh, invite all the speakers to come on soon and His Holiness the Dalai Lama will, will join the conversation. Um, after this first morning session, we'll have a break in the afternoon for, for lunch. Um, I'll be giving some uh, further housekeeping remarks during the day. Uh, and then after people come in after lunch, we'll get here about by 1 p.m. to sit down, and we'll start our second panel that will run from 1.30 to about 3.30.
I'll be introducing the members of the first panel soon, bringing them on the stage. Um, and then we will, we've, keeping an ear on uh, when His Holiness will be arriving. I think he's still in the, the hotel. We may start uh, um, uh, a few minutes early and then take a short break to introduce him on stage. Uh, maybe he's caught in traffic. Uh, we can see what happens. <laughs> um, and then we'll uh, start the, the, the full session. So right now, I'd like to introduce our uh, panelists to come on stage, and then they'll, they'll be sitting down, and we'll um, start with some opening remarks. So the, I'd like to introduce the panelists to come on stage. So to, to start the, the first morning session, panel one, the ethics, economy, and environment, I'd like to invite first Professor Edward DeLong to come up and, and give an introduction to the moderator and the speakers. Professor DeLong is the Morton and Claire Golder Professor uh, in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and the Department of Biological Engineering. He's also a member of the National Academy of Sciences, very well known and very well reputed for all of his work using the uh, modern genomics tools to really understand the basic structure of nature, understand um, microbial communities in the marine environment, and using very advanced tools to really understand their interactions and take these insights into improving um, what could be relevant for this first panel, uh, the interaction of, of humans and the environment. So I'd like to invite him come on the stage and introduce our, our first panel. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, we'd also like to thank His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who's on his way, uh, and Tenzin Priyadarshi, who is uh, the director for the Center for uh, Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values, who made this event possible. And of course, thanks to all our participating panelists. Why are we here today? We live in unique times. So unique, in fact, that some scientists have proposed that over the past several hundred years, we've entered into a new epoch called the Anthropocene. This term, Anthropocene, refers to our present time, where human population expansion and its resultant environmental consequences are having profound impact on the chemistry and biology of planet Earth. Today, human population growth and the industries that support it are challenging the environment in unprecedented ways. The physical environment, global chemical balances, and the nature of our biosphere are all changing rapidly. Never before in our planet's history has a single species so quickly and globally impacted the chemistry of Earth's soils, waters, and atmosphere, and the biology and biodiversity of its forests, fields, coastlines, and oceans. As our human population surpasses 7 billion, we're only now beginning to understand in better detail the global consequences of collective human activities. In addition to these environmental concerns, there remains great disparity in the global distribution of resources. 5% of the global population is represented by the United States, yet we consume 25% of the world's energy resources. Despite outstanding technological innovation and advances in agricultural practices, nearly 1 billion people are still hungry. We have to ask hard questions. Exactly how much is too much? Can the Earth support seven or nine or 10 billion people with happy lives and good longevity for a long period of time? The challenges humanity now faces transcend any one individual or disciplinary perspective. Our current status and future trajectory can only be fully understood from the perspective of human understandings that include the physical and biological sciences, the social sciences, engineering of all flavors, economics, and ethics. 
Only the combined perspectives of all these understandings will provide the strategies needed for moving forward with positive outcomes. Our panelists here today have expertise that spans many of these human understandings. They're here today to address some of the most pressing challenges of our times and potential courses for collective action that will move, move us towards more positive outcomes. This morning, panel one will focus on current challenges in the areas of energy, environment, and climate change, and the interrelated scientific, sociological, economic, political, and ethical pathways for moving forward towards positive solutions. This afternoon, panel two will examine the challenges of diminishing resources, maintaining global and personal health, environmental and human sustainability, employment with dignity, and the role of humanitarian action for global solutions. So let's uh, begin our first uh, panel today by introducing the speakers, and then we'll proceed onwards with our day. Our first panelist, Carrie Emanuel, will discuss the science and consequences of climate change. Carrie is a professor of atmospheric science in the Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Science at MIT. Carrie's research interests focus on tropical meteorology and climate with a specialty in hurricane physics. He's the author of over 100 peer-reviewed scientific papers and several books, including Divine Wind, The History and Science of Hurricanes, and What We Know About Climate Change. He was named one of the Times 100 Influential People in 2006 and elected as a member of the US National Academy of Sciences in 2007. In spring 2011, he defended the science of climate change at a United States Congressional House Committee hearing on science and technology. Our second speaker, Rebecca Henderson, will address the interrelationship between energy needs, economy, and the environment. Rebecca is the John and Natty MacArthur University professor at Harvard University. Professor Henderson is also a research fellow at the National Bureau of Economic Research. Her work explores how organizations respond to large-scale technological shifts most recently with regard to energy and the environment. She worked with the US Department of Justice in connection with the remedies phase of the Microsoft trial, and in 2001, she was named Teacher of the Year at the Sloan School here at MIT. One of her most recent publications, Accelerating Energy Innovation, Insights from Multiple Sectors, explores the role that public and private policy play in enabling and sustaining swift innovation in a variety of industries, from agriculture and the life sciences to information technology. Our third panelist, Penny Chisholm, will address the emerging topic of geoengineering, a proposed approach for managing global climate change. Penny is the Lee and Geraldine Professor of Environmental Studies in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at MIT. Penny's studies focus on the biology and ecology of ocean life and in the 1980s, she discovered the most abundant photosynthetic organism on our planet, Prochlorococcus. She was elected as member of the US National Academy of Sciences in 2003. Professor Chisholm has published extensively on the science, policy, and feasibility of ocean fertilization, a scheme proposed by some industrialists to help draw down CO2 from the atmosphere. Recently, Professor Chisholm has co-authored two books that aim to teach children and their parents about photosynthesis and the central role it plays in sustaining all life on Earth. Our fourth panelist, Thomas Malone, will discuss new ways to harness collective intelligence to find optimal solutions for today's global challenges. Thomas is the Patrick J. McGovern Professor of Management at the MIT Sloan School and the founding director of the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. He was also the founder and director of the MIT Center for Coordination Science. Professor Malone teaches classes on organizational design and leadership, and his research focuses on how new organizations can be designed to take advantage of possibilities provided by information technology. The past two decades of his research are summarized in his critically acclaimed book, The Future of Work, How the New Order of Business Will Shape Your Organization your management style, and your life. So I'd like to really thank all the panel panelists for being here today. <laughs> the 
We're very lucky uh, today to have our moderator here, uh, M. Sanjayan, who's the lead scientist for the Nature Conservancy and a faculty researcher at the University of Montana. His interests are in exploring the nexus between conservation, e economic welfare, and human well-being. His scientific work has been published in journals including science, nature, conservation biology, and marine policy. He is a Caddo Fellow at the Aspen Institute and a senior advisor to the Clinton Global Initiative. He is currently working on a multi-part series for PBS and National Geographic Television to air in 2014. In 2012, Mr. Sanjayan was named as the science and environment contributor for CBS News. Again, we'd like to thank everyone here. We're going to have to be a little patient as we wait for uh, His Holiness to arrive. Uh, there's lots of security issues in terms of uh, uh, transportation and so on. Um, and as soon as he does arrive, we will get started with the panel. Yes, I'm very sorry. John Sturman. John Sturman's up on stage, and he's a professor at MIT in the Sloan School. Um, John won't be speaking in this morning's panel, but he's here to stimulate the discussion, which he does so very well. Um, John's an expert. John, John is really an expert in systems thinking, in understanding the interrelationships between economy, uh, 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 resource availability, human uh, technologies, and the interplay between all of these things in terms of, uh, of how, how feedbacks and loops influence where we get to with respect to sustainability. And he'll be speaking more about that this afternoon. Um, and he's here to help us with the conversation this morning. Oh, this is my book. I would now like to invite Dean Adele Santos, Dean of the School of Architecture and Planning, to give some welcoming remarks. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of MIT, the students, the faculty, and the administration, it's my honor and pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to His Holiness the Dalai Lama on his return visit to MIT. This has generated great excitement and anticipation on the part of our community. And uh, as you can see, the audience is completely filled. Um, the Dalai, Lenta, Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformational Values, which was founded uh, three years ago um, on his last visit to our campus, uh, holds a very special place in our community. 
the mission fits well with that of MIT, reinforcing our quest to pursue no. research uh, in uh, service to society as a whole. Holistic education that includes discourse in the development of ethics and humane dimensions seems fundamental to this mission as well. The work of the center is very much appreciated way beyond the boundaries of our campus. The emphasis by the center on multidisciplinary collaboration uh, and approaches to solving pressing issues is very much part of the ethos of MIT. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as being part of one university and we cross the boundaries of disciplines very easily. And uh, I think it's an ethos that makes us quite different from other academic institutions. I think uh, this morning's panel, um, Ethics, Economics, and Environment, certainly is very close to the concerns of the School of Architecture and Planning. So um, I'm really delighted also to be here at this moment. Um, and we are very concerned with issues such as degraded environments, um, growing social inequities, uh, ill-housed populations, and the paucity of resources to really solve these uh, very urgent problems. And we always come back to the whole question of ethical values and fairness in the resolution of these things. Uh, so this is really very much about the ethos of the center uh, and the values it espouses. And uh, today's discussion, I think, is going to be memorable. It's certainly urgent and important. Uh, and so I would like to thank you for your presence for spending some days with us, and uh, for, I think, your, your inspiration and your vision. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Santos, for those remarks. I'll now pass the, uh, over to our moderator, M. Sinjayan, to continue with the first okay. panel. Great, thank you so much, and thank you, everyone, for coming here. And Your Holiness, thank you for, for being here. Uh, without uh, taking any of your time, I'm going to ask the first speaker, um, Terry Manuel, to start with his presentation. And he'll have about 10 minutes to present, and then we'll open it up for about 10 minutes of discussion uh, amongst all of us. And then we will move on to the next presenter and so on uh, for all four uh, of the people here to participate. We're going to play musical chairs when that happens. Uh, Kerry will leave his white chair, and whoever's speaking next will then occupy that seat. And one person will always be off the seat. Okay, so Kerry, go for it. <laughs> 